What's up guys, Blitz here today bringing you another video. Final Fantasy VII Remake has arrived on PC and the community has been non-stop at work with getting us the best possible mods we can have at the moment. Now really, they've been pumping out some really amazing stuff from new skins, color swaps, gameplay balancing changes with more materia slots, and of course, old Curse Marlene with the side of Mick Despair to go with that. I can't wait to bring you guys more videos talking about the newest stuff and how to install them and of course showcasing them in action. But before we get into any of that, there are a few things that we have to do in order to get the game to run properly for everybody. It's no secret that Square Enix PC ports have been pretty bad over the years and you would think that after Final Fantasy XV being a pretty solid port that maybe they would continue with that trend. But no, they didn't. <laughs> Final Fantasy VII Remake Integrate on PC, unfortunately, was a super half-assed port. I love the game, I'm having fun playing it, but that's no thanks to the developers at all. I mean, seriously, they released this game with only three graphical performance options in the menu. Textures, Shadows, and Resolution. Which, Resolution scales the quality, but all of these options have very, very minimal and bare-bones options within them. The community day one had to dive deep within the game themselves to figure out what in the world exactly is going on and thankfully they did. I have those changes added to my game and since then, seriously guys, it's been a complete night and day difference with them. So in this video, I'll give you guys a step by step breakdown on what we need to change first and which mods are needed and how to install them properly. Now with all that being said, let's get into this video. First things first, the DirectX 12 has not been doing this game or anybody any favors and it's been running poorly and inconsistent for many viewers. Now keep in mind, everyone's machine will be different and vary between these fixes. I have a laptop currently while traveling and this has 8 gigs of VRAM, it's a RTX 3080. This machine can run every game out the box perfectly fine, except Final Fantasy 7 Remake. Even computers with 3090 graphics cards are having issues with running it. But one change that's been very consistent for many people including myself is disabling DirectX 12 and turning on DirectX 11 instead. You can do this by opening up the Epic Game Store client, click on your profile on the top right, then click on settings. Scroll all the way down until you see Final Fantasy 7 Remake Integrate, expand it, and there is an option called Additional Command Line Arguments. Click this check mark and a text box will appear. Type in exactly this, dash DX11 all one word and all lowercase. Press enter and go back to the home screen. Now you can boot up your game and it will be in DirectX 11 instead of 12. This can help reduce stuttering and freezes, but is just the first step in getting this game to run good. There are more changes we have to do before you are good to go. Some notes to keep in mind though, with DirectX 11 instead of 12, HDR will not work and look very strange, but that, I mean, that's okay because HDR is whack anyways. But one other positive is that while you are in DirectX 11, more mods will consistently work when you have them installed. I had an issue myself where DirectX 12 was preventing me from running my hair mods and my eye mods, so that's something to keep in mind also. And if you have the Captain Jack Sparrow version of Final Fantasy VII Remake Integrate, to change it from DirectX 12 to DirectX 11, you need to find the FF7 Remake folder, click Engine, binaries, third party, then EOS, and the epic MUINI file in here. In here you need to add dash DX11 to the end of app name line with the space before it. Save and you're good to go. Now I don't have the Captain Jack Sparrow version so I can't really show it to you guys unfortunately. So uh, good luck with that. There are people on Google that explain it a little bit better though. I just don't have any visual images and don't want to use theirs because people going around snitching on YouTube videos these days. There is another way to remove the stutters without turning off DirectX 12. This video below can help you guys with that. It requires you to use the NVIDIA control panel to change various settings for Final Fantasy VII Remake in the program editor. I tried this out before myself and while it did work and reduce my stutterings, it did make my OBS recordings run really, really badly for me while playing the game. So this method wasn't great for me in my particular situation. But check out this video, shout out to this YouTuber below. Link is in the description and also pinned in the comments below. Okay, finally, the prime mod everyone needs to install because it's really messing everything up. Disabling Dynamic Resolution. This has been the number one mod on the website since day one, and rightfully so, it's a game changer. So right now by default, Final Fantasy VII Remake on PC has a dynamic resolution function constantly changing with every frame. 
This is eating away at your computer and causing massive stutters for everyone, including people with the best PCs. Go over to nexusmods.com. Hey, yo! I'll have a link below in the description and the comments. Final Fantasy VII Remake's homepage there. This is where all the mods I use are currently from. Now, Dynamic Resolution Disabler should be at the very top as it is the most popular and most downloaded mod. Click on that and go to the files, then click Manual Download. Click the free slow download and after the countdown of 5 seconds, the mod will have downloaded in a zip file. So now we will open this up and I personally use a program called WinRAR for my zip files so download that if you need to. But what you want to do is click on the mods folder and click extract to and locate the Final Fantasy 7 Remake integrate folder in your local disk. Program files, Epic Games folder, then click on remake and content packs. When packs is highlighted, click OK, and now you can go check and see this new folder is there. And now going forward for all your mods, when you want to install them, this directory, tilde mods, is where you want to put them. This way you can keep track of them a little bit better. Dynamic resolution will now be disabled and the game will run dramatically better. This next mod is the most important one and the easiest to activate. You have to hit that subscribe button because only 23.8% of people that watch and love our videos are currently subscribed. Guys. Hitting that subscribe button is totally free and helps support the channel out a ton. But not only that, we are giving away two more codes of Final Fantasy VII Remake on PC. We just gave away one, and the winner was First Class Gamer, so shout outs to them. Longtime viewer and subscriber, yo, happy that you got this code, man. To participate, you have to be either a member on YouTube, Twitch subscriber, or a Patreon member. If you do all three of these, you will get three entries to win and increase your chances even more. Higher. Any tier also works for this guy, so feel free to subscribe to the lowest one. Links are below in the description and the pinned comments, and the next winner will be chosen live on the next stream. But not only that, subscribing will help you guys stay up to date on the latest news when it comes to showcasing new mods, how to install them, and everything relating to Final Fantasy VII Remake. We have a good time coming our way, guys, and you won't want to miss out on any of it. For some people, these two fixes will be enough, but for others, there may be a little bit more issues. I have something else for that, and it's probably very, very important that you guys do this because Square Enix ain't doing us any favors right now. But it's going to require some personalization on your end because, like I said, everybody's computers are different. On Nexus Mods, we're going to be getting the Final Fantasy VII Hook, INI, and Dev Console Unlocker. After downloading, there are two different folders we're going to need to access. First, we're going to extract the X input DLL file to Program Files, Epic Games, Final Fantasy VII Remake, and Binaries, Windows 64. Extract X input here. Now for the engine.ini file. We're actually not going to be using the exact same one that this mod comes with. I'm going to be providing you guys with my personal setup and one thing that you guys can tweak yourself. Just be sure to check below, there's a Google Drive link in the description and the comments for you all. We're going to need to change something first. And so for this change, we're going to have to go to Documents, My Games, Final Fantasy VII Remake, Saved Folder, Config, and now while in Config, we're going to right click and make a new folder called Windows No Editor. All one word. Now inside this folder, we're going to add a engine.ini file I uploaded to a Google Drive link in the description below. Now remember, these are my personal settings, and what this does is it allows us to bypass the horrible bare bones options for graphic enhancements, download it from this Google Drive link I made, and make sure you guys paste it within the Windows No Editor folder that we just made. After you've done that, now open up the INI file and there's going to be a lot of confusing things in here I know in the notepad. But just know that 0 means off and 1 means on. Anything with a decimal like 0.5 has multiple values and settings. There are text paragraphs to the right to explain to you what each setting can do and what each increment changes. Think of this as a different graphical setting that you can make in, you know, normal not half ass PC games. <laughs> the main thing you want to mess with in here is the streaming pool size. This is your VRAM your graphics card allows it to use. I have it set to 2600 for me because it feels the best while I play, stream, and record. I have not had any frame issues since using this setting, and during my last stream I did have a lot of issues when it was set to 4000. My graphics card has 8 gigs of VRAM, so 2600 is good enough for me what it feels like. But experiment with your settings, you could probably go higher or whatever. The other settings in here like I said, change at your own discretion. 
And that wraps it up for this video guys. The first and most important mod related video we have to put out before we continue going forward showcasing some amazing stuff so this way you guys could actually play and enjoy the game, you know, because like I said, it's not running great out of the box. <laughs> Trust me guys, these changes helped me out big time and many, many others. So I want to see you all enjoy this game even more as we dive deeper into the modding community. Now that we got this video out of the way, up next will be my personal current mods I have installed and how you guys can go about getting them too. There are some amazing ones which I cannot wait to try out for myself, such as making Yuffie and Sonon part of the main game's party and vice versa. Looking forward to getting this working and showing you guys how to install them very easily. Be sure to like the video if you enjoyed and subscribe if you are new. More Final Fantasy 7 Remake videos are coming your way and you won't want to miss them. My name is Blitz and thanks for watching.